Hey everybody, how have your first two months of the year been? We are launching into the March Energy Update today. So with that said, I think I'm going to just go straight into it uh, rather than do any kind of intro. Those of you who don't know me, I do welcome you though. I appreciate it that you are joining us here today with all the rest of those who usually watch these videos. And I hope you take something away that resonates for your own journey forward. So you can check all my information out below in the description box where you can visit my services on purplerainhealing.com and or sign up for my email list where you'll get a channeled message each week from the light keepers to help support you on your journey forward. Check out the link below and you'll see where else you can get content from me as well as connect with me for any services you might need in the future for your awakening and ascension journey. Okay, with that today, we're just going to launch in. I can tell like I've been having trouble even doing the intro. They just want to talk so much. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and please remember anything that I bring through is for your own discernment and you deciding what resonates um, for you to take away, as I always say, as a puzzle piece of the puzzle of your own journey, because that's what we're here to do. Decide for ourselves what makes sense for us moving forward and how we understand the big picture journey of our life. Okay. Whew, okay, so they're talking about, um, they, they've been saying this to me over the last day, acceleration. I think we all know this. I had, uh, we're, We are in accelerated times. And, you know, we may have said this before at times, but I'm telling you right now, since January until now, the shift and change in people's individual journeys, and it looks different everywhere, is incredible. I have never seen it where so many people all at once, and remember, I work with lightworkers, and those of you who are awakening, um, where I have seen so many people have massive shift and change, like the actual decisions or the actions behind decisions being made now. This may have been worked on for like the last year, um, for a very long time, maybe more than the last year, maybe just the last like few months, because they did say to us, if you remember one of the energy updates I did, I want to say it was in October time frame or November, where they were talking about wrapping things up. They had a sense of urgency, wrap things up, put a bow on it, put a bow on it. And I was like, they never talk about time. At the end of the year, they were really kind of encouraging us to kind of, you know, quit sitting on stuff we know we need to make movement on. You know, and that can be all, all different kinds of things. It's all individual to our own unique journey. But what has happened is now that energy has accelerated, as we've seen, because I've talked about how April is a big month. We're going to talk more about that here in a minute because we've got a lot going on in March leading into April. That said, we are accelerating in our own individual journeys. Remember, it's all about the individual journey rolls up into the collective. Okay, so. What I am seeing, and just so you guys know, because, you know, we're all on this journey, but it feel, can feel very um, individual and alone at times. You all are making significant shift and change in your journey, being guided by your intuition, your higher self, the forces that be, buoyed by the accelerated energies. And lots of times we don't even know it. We're just moving forward. We're just doing the thing. But we're making these, a lot of us are making these tough decisions too. So this acceleration is continuing to happen. I will tell you in March, it feels very, um, okay. Oh my God, they're so funny. Okay, they're so funny. They're metaphors or something else. They just gave a woman that's nine months pregnant. <laughs> Like birth, right? Rebirth and birthing. Birthing something new for this year of Creative Expansion 2.0 that we've talked about. Um, and so so this is this is that idea is we are in our, la I don't want to say last stages, but for this next phase, because remember everything's in a phased approach, energetically speaking, before we have the solar eclipse on April 8th. But within that period of time in March, Okay, they just said the word gestation. Yeah, see, this is all making sense. We're ready to, and this is why so many people are making choices and decisions or locking them in now. I'm not saying you have to go do that. You know, you, we're all at different phases, okay? But a lot of people, almost every single person I work with is at a, have has made a decision, made a, um, a choice, and now they're moving in a new direction as part of their our, uh, larger journey. Anyway, so we got in March, the equinox, the spring equinox, I believe it's on the 19th, okay? And then on the 25th, there's a lunar eclipse. I apologize, I think it's full. Uh, you'll want to look and see. 
I don't know. But it is a lunar eclipse on the 25th of some sort, partial or full. I am not sure. I think it's full. Um, but then we move right in. That's like, oh, they just said sets the stage. Sets the stage for our April 8th solar eclipse. It's coming through, I believe, the pathway. I know it's through Illinois. It does a, I want to say, like a swing on up through Illinois. And I live in Iowa, so I was thinking of going, but I don't think we're going to do that this time around. Um, needless to say, we are going to be powerfully impacted by cosmic events, our alignments, very powerfully impacted. I don't know if I've ever shared this before, but the one thing they are talking about too, and they've said this previously, but really now, we are made more buoyant by these energies. Now it might not feel like it getting there, right? However, what, what is happening is as we go through this awakening and ascension journey, we're doing our work, our healing work, you know, all the things we always talk about, right? Um, what we do is we are um, more able to, I'll just say, um, step up and meet that frequency and that vibration to be able to be lifted up into where, like that next step, if that makes sense. So it's almost like a step-by-step -step approach in this sense, but what they're talking about very much is we become, we are, have the ability to be more buoyant um, in the journey because we're going to float um, along with these energies. Now, I don't want you to think that that means everything's going to be peachy keen and wonderful and lovely because we know this is an arduous journey, but at the same time, there's purpose in the things that we're going through and there is always light at the end of the tunnel and that light does show up. I will tell you that right now. There's purpose in all of this, okay? So anyway, needless to say, accelerated times, decisions being made, closing doors, opening doors, but we, what the, the situation was back at the end of last year was like, really doing that internally, right? But then the action point of this, like you kind of knew, a lot of people knew what was, you know, how you come to a conclusion of when you're going to do an action or you're going to feel into when the action is going to actually happen, when it's going to take place. This was more about at the end of last year, getting that process internally in place. And then now it's action steps actually manifested by you. Okay. So choices made, decisions made, all of that. Uh, and the other thing that they've talked a lot about, I may have said this in, in another video, or I talked to somebody that I'm working with on this, I don't recall. But that, um, okay, uh, they just said, runners take your mark. Okay, so that's also the players get in your, you know, like player, the players are in their places. We are shuffling and moving all around. There are decisions being made to move away from, move toward something. Um, all across the collective, particularly of light work, well, we're all doing this, but we aren't all aware. But in most particularly, light workers are doing this. And they keep talking about getting in your places. It's almost as though it's a little bit, okay, they're, now they're showing this, they're showing the play. <laughs> and the stage curtain's about to open, and every they're like, okay, get in your places. Get in your places. For the play to start. Okay, so this next stage, like this next, uh, I don't want to say episode, I don't know, next part of the play, right? So I've really never seen energy quite like this and the emphasis on April and this eclipse. Now, we can all argue, well, yeah, eclipses are a big deal. But with the last one was 2017, I think. I um, went down with my mom in Jefferson City, Missouri, which was a, um, I don't know what they call it. That's where you could see the full eclipse. Anyway, it was... Um, very powerful and but that is the last time we actually had um as i understand coming through this section of the world for those of us in the united states and i speak to it because it's coming right through for me but it's powerful for everyone i want you to know that um the solar eclipses are always powerful they're always they're always something to kind of keep track of whether you or not are the ones actually, you know, experiencing it. And we all experience it to one degree or another because we're a collective. So those who are meant to experience this time around, those in the, and I'm speaking to the United States because I don't really know the exact path. I do know it goes through Illinois. But those who are getting the full impact of it, there's purpose. Okay, there's purpose for us to be in the path. It doesn't mean you have to actually do anything around that time. It's a lot of energy. So, you know, you kind of just want to let it, let it happen. <laughs> anyway, um, but by us going through it in the certain locations we are across the world when the solar eclipse shows up, it also affects the rest of the collective because we're being affected and we're all linked. 
okay energetically speaking so just keep that in mind anyway we're in accelerated phase right now for this journey into April now here's the thing to keep in mind I don't have any idea if something will manifest and we will actually see it happen in April around the eclipse a lot of us have a tendency to think far too much in the material world when most things are happening energetically and when we speak of energy things take a while to or time I'll just say to manifest so what could potentially very much happen is we have our energetic events the equinox and the lunar eclipse which is leading up to um, it, so it's a momentum energy leading up to it may be all a big ball of energy that we will see manifest in different ways throughout the collective not one big bang event which we have a tendency to think of right we have a tendency to think that that oh we're going to see this big huge thing happen or the event whatever that even means which we you know how I've talked about that before it's a series of events it's a series of things it steps up this is not just one big shebang somebody's going to come down and, and save us all <laughs> we're going to save ourselves which is what we're doing by going through the awakening and ascension journey and like I've said before we are magnetic pulling others with us so let's go back and talk more about that I do want you to understand though at least from what I'm receiving is that this is an accelerated period of time so um, what I would say to you is the I don't know if we need a theme but for March if you want a theme it's definitely acceleration okay and you can think of the nine months pregnant woman uh, because they're very much showing that like oh they just said March is pregnant with possibility man they are showing this too um, it's also think about this traditionally with the spring equinox the time of spring the time of regrowth rebirth for a lot of us now I understand that those of us in the um, southern hemisphere are actually going into your fall but I, I do want to speak to this uh, what we call the spring equinox I should just say the March equinox frankly and I usually do that but I didn't this time so anyway just to encapsulate everybody across the world um, yeah going into fall in the southern hemisphere going into spring for those in the northern but again this is it's a time of change as is fall spring it's a time of rebirth and shift and change and so what better time to be able to really be pregnant with possibility to be able to overflow I keep getting like this overflow um, that does lead to more water um, conversation which we've definitely seen manifest itself per what we talked about last time in the the material world um, but I am getting this wow this freshness rebirth but I'm getting like getting a this is a metaphor but it's also material the the idea of flowing water who they're showing a waterfall water has been a big theme lately um, they're showing a waterfall flowing through March I think that's the idea of this um, oh okay so they're showing oh okay they're trying to explain it's an acceleration period and the waterfall I mean we know how strong waterfalls are right um, and the amount of water that they're showing a big one the amount of water that it can move and oh what they're talking about with it they're showing the erosion that waterfalls bring oh they just said chipping away okay creating the new yeah okay so the flow of energy that's what we're talking about the waterfall flow of the energy across the land the metaphor here is that's us right so we're having that energy flow through us across us with us and we are chipping away at parts of ourselves but we're being buoyed by it oh which is their why they're showing this this is so fascinating I love their metaphors they're they're then showing it's kind of like a Niagara Falls kind of waterfall and then what they're showing at the bottom is you know I think you can go out on boats out there or whatever but they're they're actually showing us being buoyed boy made buoyant by the raging waters that have come down chipped away at us okay so you think of energy chipped away at us breaking down helping okay and then being made buoyant by that energy oh they said to recollect yourselves and so then what they're showing this is so cool um they're showing as we recollect ourselves it's like say you're in I don't know let's just make this up you've come down the waterfall on some raft <laughs> I guess you'd be lucky to survive but needless to say this is their metaphor so then you're down at the bottom and then you're like oh wow okay I've been chipped away at right and then you're paddling away from it and then you're reaching more of the calming waters this is what I'm getting for a really good metaphor for what's happening right now with the energies flowing like a waterfall across us so with that said um 
let's just see what else we want to talk about. Okay, so one of the things, I'm, I'm kind of talking about present day too, but what's been leading up to this is um, a lot of activity around purpose, I just heard. Um, and, and this doesn't mean you have one purpose. I'm, I'm just going to say that. We, we have multiple purposes and reasons for being here in this life journey. So whatever you do has purpose, but there's there's a framing up around purpose um, and where we see ourselves headed in the future, what our passions are, what our desires are, um, you know, whether that be, uh, it could be anything. It doesn't, and, and, and we often have a tendency to think, oh, well, that, that means I need to create something for somebody else that I create a business out of, or that doesn't have to be. A lot of people do that, right? But no, this is, looks different for every single person. What your passion is, what the things are that you're creating and manifesting. You might not even know that yet, because remember, we're wave upon wave upon wave. So for some of you, this may sound totally foreign. Like, what the heck are you talking about? What I will tell you is you are actually going through this, but you're going through it at a different, um, I'll just say, I don't want to say frequency, kind of at a different, uh, the best word I would say is level. It's maybe a more subtle understanding of this as you're moving through the initial stages of your awakening journey. But a lot of light workers are, um, oh, they just said putting pen to paper. Oh, they just said signing the contract. Man, they're trying to really help us understand that we're doing the thing. We're doing our thing. And remember, this is an individual journey that we are manifesting, we are creating. And from that, with every individual reinventing themselves, whether that be, you know, whatever that looks like, including all of that healing work that we do and understanding who we truly are, we then impact the collective and the rest of the collective starts coming along. As we've said, we're magnetic. They showed me the other day this really fun metaphor of, some of you might remember, or like, you know those little shards of metal or graphite? I don't know if it is. And you'd have, I don't remember what this is. Oh, okay, where you could make sculptures and you would like pull them up. You know what I'm talking about? The magnetic, that's what they're showing right now. Like that's what's happening is the we're, we're creating out of that energy, okay? And as we create out of this energy and we move forward in our journey um, of awareness of healing we are bringing more of those like graphite shards together I don't know if it's graphite it's metal some kind of metal anyway you know what I'm talking about so anyway and we're forming we're forming into a collective a new collective when we were just all scattered on the on the table if that makes sense I know that's kind of a funny metaphor all right so let's see what else we want to talk about today let's see we're showing dollar bills or do the dollar sign, okay? And just re remember the dollar sign is representative of just currency and money in general. Oh, I just heard financial and financial institutions. Oh, that's weird. Okay, they just said, what? I don't know what this means. <laughs> do this a lot, right? Like, I don't know what this means. Um, ready to make a change. Ready to make a change. Financial institutions ready to make a change. Now, I don't know if this is a conscious thing, if there's some going on out there uh, financial institutions ready to make a change but this might be an energy that's poking in um, we know this all has to change the our, uh, the idea of uh, money um, which they have said is an ascension tool and it certainly is as you can see how important it has become in society and now we learn to look at it differently right um, so what what I'm very much getting is a start of, doesn't mean we're going to see something happen, but there, we might, is a, uh, and again, we're accelerating into April, and then this feels like this is how the rest of the year will, um, how do I want to say this, like kind of spring drives the car for the rest of the year, I'll just say, um, spring, or April, I'll just say April, um, and so the financial institution part, the re- they just said reframing of reframing of the of monetary importance reframing they're talking about reframing i have no idea what that that's going to look like they just want you to know that um but this is not what one thing i want you to know i've said this before uh, take this for what it's worth and i've always said you know come back to me someday if i'm proven wrong <laughs> and tell me i'm proven wrong but um what I always get is that it's not going to be any kind of, this is a reframing of the financial structure is what I keep getting. I don't know what that's going to look like. It might be trickle. Um, it might be a, a, a 
like trickle over time of how we're going to see a, a pattern change. But I've always understood that this is not everything falls to part hell in a handbasket kind of idea. Um, this is a trickle effect is what I keep getting. Okay, with most everything, there are the understanding that I've had is the catastrophic events that we have a tendency to awfulize around as a collective aren't going to happen. Yeah, we have them in pockets. We're going to have these in pockets, but it's not a, and boy, we could argue this one all day long because it's happened before. Pre-civilizations we've had, right? We've had other civilizations where then humankind was wiped out. And that said, I'm what I am receiving very much is that's off the table. That's not happening again. That's off the table. Now, I do understand we're going to slog through this instead of, oh God, they just said, you know what they just said? Okay, so this is talking big time across all civilizations that we've had as humankind. They said, and they're laughing, and, and they're basically saying, um, oh, you can't run away from it this time. So think about it. If, if there is um, this idea of coming in and we're just going to start with a clean slate idea of um, wiping out all of humankind or most of humankind. Um, you think about the idea of, well, that solves everybody's problem because they don't have to deal with their problems, right? Other than those who are left behind. But the assumption is, and in the understandings I have, is there aren't that many left behind. Point being is, no, we're here to clean up our own mess now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we've been wiped out before. I mean, some of you might not understand that, but go look into your pre-civilizations. They've happened, okay? And there's a lot of study around that now, a lot of archaeology being done around that as well. Um, and so, in fact, you might enjoy, those of you who, and I've kind of dabbled in this um, in my, well, I'll call free time, Graham Hancock is a very interesting individual with respect to pre-civilization, so you might enjoy that. But anyway, the point in, in this is that what I have very much understood is that, no, it's our journey here to clean up our own mess. There's no one coming to save us. You know, I know religion teaches us that, depending on what faith you're a part of. Um, there's no one individual coming to save us. We're saving ourselves one by one, one by one, one by one. And we roll up into that we're divine energy anyway, right? We're part of that individually. And then as collectively, we roll up into, yes, we're going to, you know, create our own um, nirvana as such through the continued work that we're doing in the awakening and ascension process. So with that said, um, yeah, I don't know why I got into talking. Oh, financial institutions. That's what it, oh, why, it can, they can really kind of take me places. Um, so the financial institutions. So there's a remapping. This might all be, be behind the scenes. Remapping. They are showing me, and again, they're talking about the United States. That's my frame of reference. Okay. I don't know what this means. The Treasury or the Federal Reserve. That's what I'm getting. Ah, they're saying Federal Reserve. I have no idea what's going on there. Uh, keep that in the back of your mind. <coughs> mind. <coughs> the Federal Reserve will have a play in this or some kind of uh, larger institution having a hand in this. I don't know what that means. This may uh, show up later this year. It may only be an energy that is um, doing something um, I'll just say kind of internally, if that makes any sense. Um, and this could be ages off that we see something. I don't know. But I do get that this momentum is shaking that foundation. And this is that the cosmic alignments is what I'm very much getting. This acceleration. And not just that. Here, make sure you understand this. You're a part of this. Because you're part of that acceleration. So what's happening as you're shifting and changing in your journey, you're more matching I'll just say the energy of the cosmic alignments, and then what's happening is you're helping strengthen that. Okay, we know that, right? We do know that, but that's what they're showing. Okay, so so let's just take a look. Well, let me let, let's just look at kind of what is it you can do or consider doing in your journey um, in the course of March. Now, everybody's at a different stage, so this probably isn't going to be applicable to everyone. Um, okay, well, eh, you know. Always it's the self-care. This is huge now, I will say. The spiritual hygiene, self-care. And I'm not talking because we need to be scared of energy. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking because they're tough. We're doing a ton of clearing. There are people out there clearing like nobody's business and for themselves and the collective, and it's painful. 
and difficult. So what I will say to you is keep doing your spiritual work. Keep doing the hygiene. Keep doing all of your self-care. So that's just kind of a known fact, right? What else can we do? Oh, they really want you to recognize in whatever small way even. It doesn't have to be anything big. You don't have to go to a you know, big collective gathering and do a um, ceremony or ritual. You can, but if you don't want to, you don't have to. We have a tendency to think we have to do all these elaborate things for these events, but when in reality it's a very personal, can be a very personal approach, but it, it also can be a wonderful thing to do something collectively. So think about how, like, put those dates on your calendar, and what do they mean to you? What can you do to embody the beauty of the energy that's coming in? And, or to make that intention that it flow through you and assist you in your journey forward, right? The other thing I want to mention, too, is remember we have solar flares. In fact, um, we've had a lot. We've had, we're in these solar maximum times. This is another, um, it's, it's like a pum, well, how do I want to say this? Oh, they just said constant injection. Yeah. Okay. Oh, they just said fuel the fire. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. So this is going to the core which would seem obvious, right? The crystalline core of the earth. It's going to the core. It's re-energizing earth. So they're doing this kind of thing, like a pounding, 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 pounding. Um, kind of unlike ever before or in recent times. And here's the thing. The reason it's even more powerful now is where we all are in the awakening ascension journey, right? Um, I have no idea when we had last had a, of what we'll call a solar maximum time frame, time period. I have no idea. But I do know that right now this is um, helping... Um, us accelerate. It's helping Earth. It's helping us. It's another one of those cosmic events, or I'll just say it's not really an alignment as such, but um, there is a, okay, they just said constant injection of divine light. Constant injection. That's okay. Hmm. Constant injection of divine light from the sun. Huh. Yeah. I mean, you know, we have a tendency to think that divine source light is elsewhere. And it was the Egyptians that, the god Ra was the sun god, right? They, You can see why, right? So needless to say, we're being pummeled with solar energy as well to assist us in this journey. So let's go back to what I was saying, which was what else you can do. Um, recognizing these events, I think, is also, that's what they were saying, that with intention is what they just said. Again, it can be something simple. It doesn't have to be anything elaborate. Um, or it can be, because those are beautiful too, right? All right, let's see what else. They just said, join your neighbors. What does that mean? Join your neighbors. Oh, they just said in song and dance. What? Join your neighbors. Now remember, they do metaphors. You could join your neighbors in song, real song and dance if you want. That'd be kind of cool. <laughs> um, they just said celebratory times. Okay, it's probably not, I don't know what that means. Um, this is, you know, remember everything is how we see it from a much larger energetic awakening perspective because as we know, um, how we start to understand things and how we are communicated to changes. So, join your neighbors in celebration and dance. I'm seeing a lot of smiles. I'm seeing, um, okay, they just showed the village people of um, the Grinch Who Stole Christmas. They're showing, remember how they always just got through things and they'd sing and they'd be joyous regardless? Oh, this is part of why. Okay, okay, if you don't know that, they... They continued, even as their gifts were stolen by the Grinch, they continued their joy. I love that. I always love that. Anyway, so this is what they're talking about, finding joy amongst the struggle and having knowing that we will persevere. Oh, I love that. Knowing we will persevere and not coming from a place of fear, but coming from a place of compassion and heartfelt empathy and understanding, holding hands with your neighbor, Dancing in the streets kind of idea. It's the idea, right? Huh. There's purpose in that. Because, you know, like I said, here we are in the spring equinox. It is a time of cell. Or, sorry, I keep saying spring. March equinox. <clears throat> um, a time of celebration. A time of shift and change. A time of great power. In, in the time of great power. <laughs> right? So we have these powerful events in the time of great power. So it's like a double whammy kind of idea. So interesting. Let's just take a look also then at, um, 
if there's anything else that we see that may be um, oh coming up in the collective materially speaking also I just want to make a comment um, the things that we bring through they may sound sometimes when we see things happening in the collective they may sound from a human level disastrous and awful and oh it's awful we have to go through that but there's a purpose energetically behind these things you know, like when we talk about water, we talk about flooding and all of that. That's a washing away of, all right? Yeah, I know it takes some of our homes and our businesses and whatnot. And, you know, it's it's a little bit like, I don't want to say this, but like we're in the way. You know, this is what happens. These are the things that occur. And it's a, it, it is actually when we l remember the spiritual journey is learning the big picture and learning the big understanding of this, not the myopic way we think, right? Of, oh, how does that affect me as a human? Yes, that's important. I understand we're living a human life. But the point is, is when you start understanding the bigger spiritual meaning behind this, you understand that the, the water part, that's the washing away of. And it's a metaphor for, I mean, it's an actual event. Okay, they just said this. And I'm, I'm only saying this word because I'm, I'm really, I don't like this word, but many of you will be, uh, uh, be able to relate to this. Like the washing away of our sins kind of idea. Now, it's not sins because we're sinful people. I'm not talking about that. But the, the, meta, the, the idea is the washing away of, of the old ways, of the old days, of the old way of thinking. So, and it's a cleansing and a clearing of the earth as well. And there's purpose in that because there's a shift and change. When we have, um, oftentimes when we have flooding, often massive flooding or rains, there's shift and change. Wow, they're using an erosion and water theme. A lot the chipping away of remember the waterfall chipping away eroding us like forming us into something new under that waterfall of energy but they're also talking about that um, here um, with respect to just kind of the flooding in general again it's an erosion that happens but it's for purpose it's for reforming the land so that's what's happening with us with the waterfall of energy coming over us right over the with these events so they're kind of trying to give it a, an out an analogy of um, what we're talking about and what we could see on earth and trying to reframe that. It doesn't mean we don't have empathy for people who are in the way of that and they're impacted by that because we do. But we're talking big picture meanings here. Okay. So we're going to see, continue to see um, big, I keep getting big gushes, big flowing of water, big clearing out of spaces. Um, okay. Let's just look at one more thing. And then I think we're going to wrap this up. Um, We've talked the last couple of months about the continued eruption of people in pockets is what they just said. And I'm just saying this again, just so you know um, that this is going to continue. People in pockets, they just said. It's not a worldwide thing, but it is a, they are definitely in, uh, there's a lot of a of solidarity I just got for these local events that we're going to hear about of uprise. Okay. Like taking back your power kind of thing, right? Um, so the solidarity is through the energy, and this is so interesting, taking back the power from the powers that be, well, because the old guard's breaking down. We know that, right? Okay, so we're going to keep seeing that. We, um, I want to see if we can get anything else here that might help you kind of understand what we got going on. Uh, again, remember, that doesn't mean these all these things are going to happen right now. It does mean, though, the energetic stage is being set for this, too. So who knows when the events will manifest. Let's just see what else we have here. Huh. 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 Resurgence in community, they just said. They're showing something about small towns. Huh. I wonder if any of you know this. I don't know. I mean, I'd love for you to all share anything that relates to anything you know about this. Any more information you get. I mean, this isn't just about me providing information. Please provide information. Please share your journey. Please share. This is a collective. I mean, we know this is a collective thing, right? So, but I'm getting, huh, growth in small community. Growth in, they keep showing like a rebuilding of the close-knitness of community. And they're actually showing resurgence of smaller towns. I don't know. Is that happening? I don't know. That would be very cool. There's some, I mean, think about, I know I can use the example of rural America. I live in Iowa, we're very rural. You know, we've had so many small towns just go to pieces that used to be just wonderful little places. Um, 
wow, that would be so wonderful to see that happen. I wonder if any of you have a sense of that. Um, resurgence of community, and they keep showing smaller towns, smaller locations. There's purpose in that. Okay, they're talking about it. Uh, light workers have been condensed, or there's been a condensing feel. Ooh, this may be light workers moving to smaller locations too, uh, or smaller towns. Uh, they're talking about there's been a big, when people were moving to the cities, or because I think there's a move out now, uh, COVID kind of started some of that, uh, but this big condensing into the cities, they said that didn't do us any good because we're not spread out, but there was purpose in it uh, because we set almost like a, this is so weird, an energetic timer. Like there had to be the collective of energy during those times. And now with this, they keep talking about like there's a migration out of the cities. I have no idea. Is that a thing? Do we know? Um, migration. I know COVID caused some of, some of that, but I didn't know if it's still continuing. Cause I'm just not that aware. Uh, but what they're talking about is a movement to taking the light. Now we're ready to spread out, if that makes sense. Be in different places. Whether that's traveling, moving, whatever that means. But there is this sense that a lot of us are making different choices on where we're going to be. And I'm talking in the totality of humankind. Um, which also t goes to this idea that, and I, who knows when this will be, but the whole idea of country borders, it's a whole other conversation that's been brought through in the past where um, there will be a day come when there's no need for borders and in countries, and that's a whole other kind of channeled conversation maybe we can have some time. But anyway, um, so I think we're going to leave it at that. So this is a period of acceleration that we've got going on for March, which means that's going to happen or there's going to be the potential or you're going to maybe feel that or you're going to be at the beginning stages of some kind of acceleration in your journey. Or you maybe even really, like they said back in December, starting to put like put a bow on it, right? <laughs> but this is why they were showing that back then, because this is this energetic move toward spring, April time frame. It feels bigger than ever before. Again, I don't know what that means, how that will manifest, if we will see anything. But most assuredly, most assuredly, you can take away, you will be personally impacted, I will say, in a positive way. Sometimes it doesn't feel like that with the energies of these events. So I hope you enjoy your March. Um, we're going to have a lot of powerful energies. Take care of yourself. Remember to balance your journey with, you know, the things that we have to get done with time for solitude, grace to yourself, and loving care. So with that today, thank you so much for joining me. Check out purplerainhealing.com for all of my services. I would love to work with you in helping you forward in your awakening and ascension journey or a session on channeled messages for your awakening journey. I also offer distance energy healing, which can assist you so much during the times we're in during this high energetic period of March. All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining me. Please comment below, share your experiences, share your knowledge with the rest of us, if you will. I love to hear from you, and I will see you in the next video.